the impact of nutrition, microbiome, and metabolism on the immune system. My name is Dr. Lenore Powell, and I am a medical education specialist with Genova Diagnostics. This presentation's objectives are to basically provide a high-level overview of the immune system and discuss its impact through nutrition, the microbiome, and metabolism. So I really enjoy this diagram. It really shows us this interconnection between what seems to be separate systems that are actually interconnected to delineate health and disease. So let's do a brief review of each of these components, starting off at the very top with the immune system, an extremely complex system that protects us against microbes and certain diseases. It can recognize foreign invaders and basically take immediate action for our protection. The immune system is generally divided into innate and adaptive. Innate immunity is a combination of physical barriers like your skin and mucus, plus enzymes and chemicals like stomach acid. Adaptive or acquired immunity is our personal AI or automated learning system regulated by cells and organs like bone marrow and lymph nodes that recognizes foreign substances and it initiates this organized attack against invaders with antibodies. In the center, we have nutrition. So how food affects the health of the body. You know, we're talking about the macronutrients, the proteins, the carbs and the fats and how it supplies us with those micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals to the body for basically proper functioning. Metabolism is officially defined as the bodily process needed to maintain life, but through metabolism, our body turns the food we eat into energy that the body needs. Microbiome consists of microbes, so bacteria, fungi, protozoa, viruses that live on and in the human body playing an important role within health. Looking at this diagram, we can really see various components that impact the well-being of the immune system. Now, yeah, we should also consider healthy lifestyle factors as well, such as sleep and exercise, low stress. But for this presentation, we're really going to just focus on the interaction of the immune system, nutrition, the microbiome, and metabolism. So looking at how nutrition influences the immune system, let's review a few important nutrients. Vitamin A, known as the anti-infective vitamin. This micronutrient or antioxidant is important for vision. It promotes growth, development, protects the epithelium and mucus integrity in the body or basically the innate immune system. It's involved in the development of the immune system and helps with regulation of our immune response. Our immune response may contain an aspect of inflammation, but excessive inflammation can actually dampen our immune response. And literature shows us that with global child-related infections like measles and diarrhea, a deficiency in vitamin A leads to poor outcomes, and supplementation with higher doses appropriate for age can greatly improve these outcomes. Vitamin C, an essential nutrient which cannot be synthesized by humans, so we have to get it from the diet. It's important as a cofactor for the biosynthesis of carnitine and collagen, and it's also an amazing antioxidant. So it helps the innate immune system by supporting the epithelial barrier that protects us against pathogens and an inflammatory mediator through cytokines. During acute infections, vitamin C can stimulate neutrophil migration to the infected site, enhance phagocytosis and oxidant protection or production, plus help with killing the microbes due to the antioxidant properties. Um, it protects local tissues from excessive oxidative damage. Deficiency usually results in impaired immunity and higher susceptibility to infection. A vitamin C is shown to also be helpful with the common cold and respiratory infections, to list a few. Vitamin E, that soluble antioxidant, regulates cell signaling, influences immune function, and inhibits coagulation. So vitamin E enhances T cell function, even in the elderly, which generally experience a decline in T cell function, as well as it inhibits PGE2 or prostaglandins 2 produced by macrophages, which can lead to excessive inflammation and also negatively impact the immune function. Vitamin D, fat soluble nutrient, um, mainly coming from the diet and synthesized from our skin, is essential for bone health and calcium balance. But vitamin D is also expressed on most immune cells and modulates the innate and adaptive immune response. A deficiency in vitamin D is associated with autoimmune disease and increased susceptibility to infection. 
B6, a cofactor for enzymes involved in glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, and the synthesis of even neurotransmitters, heme, B3, red blood cells, and nucleic acids. Although the mechanism of B6 on the immune system is still kind of unclear um, and still under investigation, clinical studies show that deficiency leads to lymphoid atrophy and reduce lymphocytes and T cells. So replacement of B6, it actually did lead to a significant increase in T cells in critically ill patients in one study and elderly did exhibit better immune function while supplementing with vitamin B6. B9 or folate plays a key role in coenzymes involved in DNA and SAMe synthesis. Uh, methylation, nucleic acids, and amino acid metabolism and red blood cell production. We do know that when deficient in B9, it can actually inhibit CD8 T cells and natural killer cells, leading to decreased resistance to infection. This nutrient is expressed on the surface of T reg cells, and when absent, regulating regulatory T cells or T reg cells are produced but fail to survive. So these cells are a subset of T cells and suppress the immune response. They also inhibit T cell production and cytokine production, and plus may play a role in preventing autoimmunity as well. Zinc plays a vital role in the immune system. Um, also protein metabolism, heme synthesis, growth and development, reproduction, digestion, antioxidant function. So it regulates signaling pathways in the innate and adaptive immune cells. Zinc deficiency actually favors allergies and autoimmune disease by altering the Th1, Th2 balance, favoring Th2. We also see recurrent viral and bacterial infections with severe deficiencies. In the elderly, we view elevated interleukin-6 or IL-6 production and decreased T cell production, which is inflammatory and can be modified by zinc supplementation. Unlike nutrients we discussed, an excess of zinc can also cause immune dysregulation by suppressing T and B cell function, activate macrophages, and increase regulation T cells. Selenium, a mineral that plays an important role in metabolism, thyroid function, and as an antioxidant. So it's unclear if all types of immune re responses benefit from selenium supplementation. We do see it boosting hormonal immunity. It increases lymphocyte count and divert immune responses away from the CD4 uh, Th2 type that drives allergic asthma and promotes the Th1 type that provides protection against viral infections and cancers. Iron, a component of several proteins and enzymes and supports oxygen transport, energy production, and DNA synthesis. Like zinc, iron deficiency or excess can impact the immune system. Protein amino acids are required for the synthesis of a variety of specific proteins, including cytokines and antibodies, and regulate key metabolic pathways of the immune response to infectious pathogens. In particular, arginine, Glutamine and cysteine have important roles within the immune system. Our gene produces nitric oxide, which helps to kill pathogens, activate cytokines, and antibody production. Glutamine and cysteine are important for the production of glutathione. So we see with a deficiency in glutathione, uh, we also see a decrease in CD4 cells and impaired lymphocytes. Furthermore, low glutathione is definitely associated with several diseases. PUFAs, or polyunsaturated fatty acids, so in addition to their role as a major substrate for energy production and storage, fatty acids are important for cellular membrane structure, um, the production of eicosanoids and signaling. Remember that inflammation is a part of the body's response to injury and infection. The inflammatory mediators are things like cytokines and eicosanoids that are responsible for several things, including impacting the CNS. So for example, fever and loss of appetite, breaking down proteins in fat, uh, liver, uh, so the synthesis of acute phase proteins, and pathogen destruction. Under controlled conditions, the acute phase of the inflammatory process, it's important component of the immune system. Ensuring adequate EPA to DHA ratio, uh, decreasing excessive trans fatty acids, and a balanced arachidonic acid to EPA ratio will encourage a better inflammatory response to injury or infection. The 100 trillion microbes play a role, an important role, including the one that resides outside as well as inside the human body, mainly the skin and the GI tract, playing an important role with the innate immune system. 
They are influenced by diet, age, and several environmental factors. Specifically, the gut microbiome is a key player in regulating the defense responses and metabolism, plus helping with the maturation of the immune system. Short chain fatty acids, or SCFAs, are derived from microbiome fermenting undigested carbohydrates or dietary fiber within the gut because humans lack enzymes to digest fiber. These three short chain fatty acids we will focus on are butyrate, propionate, acetate that provide the colon with energy required during metabolic demands. They are also at play an important role with the immune system. They regulate neutrophil function and migration. They are usually the first cells to arrive on the scene when we experience a bacterial infection and also help to heal damaged tissues. Short chain fatty acids inhibit inflammatory cytokines, which when your immune system is acutely fighting a foreign pathogen, these cytokines can be good, but this process needs to be shut off because inflammation that isn't managed can lead to disease. Increased expression of tight junction proteins, which is a protective barrier in the GI tract as well. So now that we see how poor nutrition and imbalanced microbiome or dysbiosis and poor metabolism impacts the immune system, let's look at how micronutrient testing can help us identify deficiencies in these areas that may lead to suboptimal immune system function. So if you're familiar with nutrition testing, you notice that the NutriVal received a mini facelift. So we redesigned it to provide a fresh look and include a few beneficial markers to help with clinical utility. So as I flip through the various pages of the report, you will notice that the majority of the tests remained unchanged. We still provide nutrient recommendations, interpretation at a glance, organic acids, amino acids, fatty acids, and the elemental markers. We also updated all support materials as it relates to this profile. So for more information, please go to www.gdx.net forward slash news forward slash Genova dash nutritional dash testing for more information. The biggest update and my personal favorite is providing the clinicians with a functional imbalance score very similar to what we provide on the GI effects stool profile. And underneath the results overview are the five functional imbalance pillars which contain an overall score for the area and all the individual biomarkers that contributes to that score. For our talk on the immune system, we're going to be focusing on these specific functional pillars, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, and methylation issues. Going page by page of this profile, on page number two, here is the nutrient needs overview section showing the level of need for each nutrient. Green represents normal need, yellow represents borderline need, and red represents high need. And the recommendations on the right are based on the findings of the profile. The far right section, provider recommendations allow you the space to further tailor the recommendations based on the patient's diagnosis or medications. Here's interpretation at a glance. For each nutrient that is assessed, you see the severity of the need for that nutrient on the green, yellow, red bar, along with the functional imbalance score. The higher the score, the greater the need for support. With the NutriVal, we are evaluating organic acids or metabolic pathways to get an indication of needs for vitamins and mineral cofactors. We're going to step through each section of the organic acids and discuss indications, as well as focusing on the need for specific nutrients and the health of the immune system. The first section of the organic acids is the malabsorption and dysbiosis markers. This section looks at byproducts of microbiome and can lead to recommendations for digestive support and or microbiome support with elevated organic acids. So elevated organic acids, we also may consider following up with a stool test for further evaluation as well. 
as we mentioned above, the microbiome and nutrition adequacy contributes greatly to a healthy immune system. So with dysbiosis or maldigestion absorption, the immune system could be negatively impacted. Furthermore, because the microbiome is responsible for producing short chain fatty acids, dysbiosis can lead to decreased production. And again, they are also important for the innate immune function within the GI tract. The citric acid cycle, or TCA, um, how we take the macronutrients and generate energy through metabolism. This section provides insight into cofactor vitamins and mineral needs in cellular energy, or ATP production. When it comes to the immune system, if we are deficient in iron, we may see an elevation in citric acid, cisaconitic acid, and succinic acid along with clinical symptoms of iron deficiency, such as cold, fatigue, headaches, or dizziness, we would consider following up with serum testing for iron. Citric acid and cisaconitic acid are also negatively impacted with oxidative stress and can cause a recommendation for antioxidants along with the lipid peroxides, oxidative stress to cell membrane, and 8-OACG, oxidative stress to DNA, marker elevations. So next are the vitamin markers, which provides insight into the need for specific B vitamins. For immune system function, we can look at FIGLU or formaglutamic acid as an indication for needing vitamin B9. The bottom left diagram shows that with a lack of B9, the FIGLU will elevate versus converting into glutamic acid through glutamate forminotransferase enzyme, which is dependent on that specific nutrient. The next section of the organic acids are called the neurotransmitter metabolites. Again, the subheaders explain which pathway and or neurotransmitter the analyte relates to. The chironine markers relate to a specific pathway that comes from tryptophan. And as you can see in the parentheses, these markers give strong indications for the need for B6. So a clinical pearl regarding chironine markers is that chironic acid turns into the next marker, quilinolic acid. There's a good amount of literature that does indicate quinolinic acid as having inflammatory and neuroexcitatory X aspects. Because the immune system depends on the proper amount of inflammation to combat invaders, we do not want to be in a constant state of inflammation, which can impact the immune system in a negative way. So we want to make sure we look at the chironic quinolinic ratio in your patients, which is listed as the third marker here. The catecholamine markers are byproducts of dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. While they are mainly used as indicators for needs for vitamins and mineral factors, many clinicians notice alterations in these markers in catecholamine excess or deficiencies. Lastly, the serotonin marker is 5-hydroxyindolecetic acid, which is a breakdown product of serotonin outside of medications and supplements that can influence serotonin. It could also be an indication of gut dysbiosis. Regarding the immune system, these two markers, chironic and xanthronic acid, are indicators of B6. And looking at the serotonin markers for potential dysbiosis, along with the chironic quinolinic ratio for excessive inflammation. The toxin detoxification markers gives us some insight into potential issues with antioxidant production, environmental exposures, and oxidative stress. Elevations will influence the need for antioxidant markers. As we reviewed prior, antioxidants are critical for the immune system, even glutathione, which is produced from glutamine, cysteine, and glycine. When we interpret the amino acids, first it's important to look at the overall trend of the amino acids. It's not uncommon to see some interpersonal variability, meaning a few results may bounce around high or low. When the results trend low, it can give indication into intake, digestion, absorption, and utilization. And when they trend high, we question adequate nutrients to help the body use the amino acids. Regarding the immune system, arginine, the precursor of nitric oxide, glutamine, and cysteine are the building blocks of glutathione. Essential metabolic fatty acid markers. So we're looking at the overall percentage for each category to evaluate balance. Long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs, are important, especially the omega-3 fatty acids and ensuring a healthy arachidonic acid, AA, to EPA balance. 
The last page of the report contains the elemental markers, including the nutrient elements and toxic elements. Here we measure directly zinc and copper. The one nutrient that we have not discussed on the NutriVal so far was vitamin D. Remember, vitamin D has the ability to modulate the innate and adaptive immune system, but for the NutriVal profile, the vitamin D is an add-on marker. So that wraps up our, our discussion. Hopefully I've showed you ample evidence looking into the interconnection of the immune system with nutrition, metabolism, and the microbiome, as well as consider nutrition testing when you are wanting to optimize the, the immune system of your patients. For an even greater dive into the clinical utility of these products, we have several additional resources available. We have a fully referenced comprehensive NutriVal and Metabolomics Plus support guide, which details every function and analyte of the report. We have a multitude of live GDX webinars on our website, www.gdx.net. For one-on-one -on -one education consults, you can call customer service. And lastly, tune into our Lab Report podcast, which explores the latest information related to integrative and functional medicine and laboratory testing. Again, my name is Dr. Lenore Powell, and I appreciate your time. If you have additional questions, do not hesitate to contact customer service. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.